Good day everyone and once again we're back together and uh, this time we'll be looking once again at electrostatics. This is the second video. If you haven't watched the first one, please just uh, do yourself a favor and do watch it. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about conservation of charge, right? And uh, this is for grade 10. Okay, so when we talk about uh, the conservation of charge, now please remember that word conservation, it means it's to keep something the same or to keep something in the same state all right so so the law of conservation of charge just simply says uh you know that the net charge of an in an isolated system stays constant right during any physical process i'm going to explain what that means right so remember that uh in this case once we've got a positive charge we, we explained we said a positive charge, all it simply tells us is, is that we've got um, more protons than electrons, right? So, or we can say we've got a deficiency of electrons, okay, of electrons. And the reason why we like talking more about electrons is because electrons are the ones that can uh, move, right? So in this case, when we've got a negative charge, we've got an excess of electrons. Okay, so we've got excess of electrons. Right, now, I want you to please note in this case, so when we've got two charges, and what we are going to do, right? Now, remember, um, you know, we say that charge is not uh, created or destroyed, right? But it can be transferred from one object to another right so in this case supposing that we've got two objects that are now caused to be in contact with each other right so we know that if we cause them to be in contact so supposing let's say here we are we've got you know uh, an object that is charged okay let's say another object that is charged so let's call this object A and object B, right? Okay, respectively, let's say this one is a charge of positive 10 uh, nanocoulombs. Now you know what these symbols mean, right? We covered that in our previous video, right? And let's say this one is going to be negative uh, 20 nanocoulombs, okay? Right, so what happens? It means this one has got so many electrons in it that are in excess, right? Whereas this one has got a deficiency of electrons, right? But now, if we cause A and B to touch each other, right? So let's say we bring them closer such that they are able to touch one another, right? Uh, so we make them to be in contact with each other. So what happens the moment that they come into contact, right? So it means that the charges uh, in A and the charges in B, we will have a transfer of charges, right, between the two until to the point. Now, in this case, I need to be very clear about that. Uh, we are talking about, uh, you know, spheres or objects that are equal in size, right? So most of the time, actually all the time uh, in our syllabus, we'll be looking at objects that are in equal uh, are equal in size, right? So once we cause them to touch, they will transfer, right, whatever excess or deficiency they are, and they will be distributed equally, okay? So how will I be able now to determine the charge of A or B after they are made to touch, right? Now think about it, before this, they would have had a force of attraction, isn't it? So the two of them would have a force of attraction. Now, if we were to determine the, um, you know, the, the, the magnitude of the charge on each sphere, right? So let's do that. Let's say calculate um, the charge on each sphere, right? So... We want to determine what would be the net charge, right? So we said once we cause them to touch and we separate them, okay? 
they will now have a new charge. Okay, right. So now here's A, here is B. But what would be their uh, new charges? So we say the net charge would be QA plus QB all over 2. So you remember the charge on A was positive 10. So we'd say that would be positive 10 nanocoulombs, right? Plus a negative 20. Remember that B was negative 20 uh, nanocoulombs as well. All right. So we've got both of them to be at 20. And so we divide both by 2. Okay, so notice that factor is the same. So 10 nanocoulombs uh, plus a negative 20 nanocoulombs, that will give us negative 10, right? <clears throat> right, but when, once we divide that by 2, that will give us negative 5 times 10 negative 9 coulombs. And so this becomes in this case the charge on each sphere so it means that after they are separated ladies and gents each one will have a charge of negative so if this is a and this is b they will have negative 10 times 10 negative 5 rather times 10 negative 9 okay both of them will have equal charges that are actually have the same sign so as a result once they're caused to touch and they are separated it means that the net charge will be equal right both of them carry the same charge and what do you notice they will now have a force of repulsion please keep that in mind ladies and gents because that will form the basis of what we do in the next few weeks so remember right when we've got charges we cause them to touch, right? And we separate them. They will transfer whatever charge in this case equally, right? Now, I want us to do the following. Uh, for the second question, I want us to calculate, all right? Calculate the number of electrons that have been transferred, of electrons rather, that were transferred okay now I want you to please note so how would we now get the number of electrons that were transferred now note what would have happened here a had a positive charge right and B had a negative charge so clearly when they were caused to touch when they were made to touch a transferred the electrons that were in excess, right? Right. So remember that uh, A had uh, a brother B had uh, electrons in 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 excess, rather. A B would be the one that transfers electrons in this case because it's negative, right? So now it transferred electrons such that even though A started with a deficit of electrons, right? So now it's got an excess of electrons. Why? Because it received electrons from A. So as a result, now um, it received electrons from B. I don't know why I keep saying A, right? So now we end up with an excess of electrons in A uh, of negative 5 nanocoulombs, right? So now we want to find out how many electrons were transferred. Right, ladies and gents, you're going to have to, uh, you know, when we count the number of electrons, this is going to be the change in charge. So this would be the charge that is transferred divided by the unit charge of an electron. Now, we're going to choose either one, right? But uh, um, I prefer always using the one that received electrons, right? In this case, which one received electrons? That would be A, right? So I'm going to say the charge of A final 
minus the charge of A initial. So it means before, uh, after they touched, this is before they touched, divided by, remember we said E, the unit electron, I mean the unit charge of an electron, right? So charge of A final, we said this is minus 5 times 10, negative 9, minus, now the charge of A initially was a positive 10, okay? So this would be minus a positive 10 nanocoulombs, okay? But what do we divide this with? We divide this with a unit charge of an electron. So that's negative 1.6 times 10, negative 19. Right, now let's have a look at that cal calculation quickly, right? So I'm going to say, well, this is going to be negative 5. All right, minus a positive 10. Uh, 10 exponent negative 9 okay and we are dividing that by negative 1.6 exponent negative 19 all right so I get that huge number there okay and I mean think about electrons ladies and gents right there are billions and billions of electrons. So in this case, um, the number that we get, let's see how many zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, um, okay, let's, let's write it in scientific notation. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So this would be 9.3... Eight, so I'm rounding it off times 10 exponent 11 electrons. Note, had they said to us calculate the amount of charge that is transferred, would have just taken this top part here, right? That would have been the charge that's transferred. But once they look for the electrons, we need to take that change in charge and divide it by the unit charge of an electron. And so we get the number of electrons that were, um, uh, were transferred, right? So I hope this makes sense, ladies and gents, right? We're going to be talking about forces, right? Uh, electrostatic forces. I hope uh, this was helpful to you. Otherwise, ladies and gents, please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell others that Malume is doing the most when it comes to maths and science. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.